it doesn't work, okay? We're gonna have to stop thinking about this one as, as, a, as a legitimate strategy, because we simply have too much at stake. But the hundredth monkey, the hundredth monkey never happened, people. It's a story, it's a fabrication, it's not reality. You might as well say Santa Claus is giving me, giving me a revolution for Christmas. And a pony, right? Um, a make-believe story is a seriously bad foundation for a serious resistance movement. Okay, myth, all we can change is ourselves. I actually can't say this any better than, than Bob Jensen did. This is one of the central messages promoted by the ideologues of capitalism. Individual behavior in private is more important than collective action in public. The claim that through private action we can create our own reality is one of the key tenets of a predatory corporate capitalism that naturalizes unjust hierarchy, a part of the overall project of discouraging political struggle and encouraging us to retreat into a private realm where life is defined by consumption. I mean, honestly, if previous generations of women had really thought that most of us in this room wouldn't be able to keep our own money, earn our own wages, own our own <coughs> houses, leave the house, vote, run for office, testify in court, be a judge in a court, um, frankly, we wouldn't even own the clothes on our backs. Our fathers or our husbands would own our clothing. Um, so let's be grateful that they knew there was something bigger. And they really suffered for us to have the amount that we have. Um, and, and it's well worth our while to take up where they left off, because we do have some tools now um, because of their sacrifice. Um, okay, if women withdraw, patriarchy will crumble. There's a piece of truth in this one. Now, I am someone, I'll admit, I am very sympathetic to the utopian impulse. Um, the part of withdrawal that's necessary is breaking through that psychology of the oppressed. So the denial, um, the, the accommodation, and the consent that we all struggle with, and that's crucial but it's not enough. So as they say, it's necessary but not sufficient. Now all resistance movements need a supporting culture of resistance. Um, so there's a pattern across resistance struggles in which first there's either the creation or the reinvigoration of that culture, the culture of, of um, that encourages self-respect, that encourages class consciousness, that encourages loyalty to your own kind. Um, so breaking through that identification with the oppressor and calling for new norms of behavior that are about uh, self-respect and loyalty to your own people, both psychologically and collectively, okay? And that's really important, and there's tons of examples of this through history. So one example um, would be uh, a movement called the Gaelic Revival that began in the 1870s in Ireland. So, you know, they endured 800 years of colonization from the English. And uh, around 1870, this movement starts. It starts as a, culturary, a cultural and literary movement. So they're reviving the language, which is going extinct. Um, it's all about poetry and music and theater, and they start putting on these festivals. They revive uh, traditional Gaelic sports. And you might think that's a little bit you know, fluffy. In fact, it ends up being crucial because the Gaelic Athletic Association um, ends up becoming the, Iri the Irish Republican, the Irish um, like Republican Brotherhood, which is what turns into the original IRA. So they are the people who end up waging the actual armed struggle against the British. But it starts with the Gaelic Athletic Association. Um, so anyway, so there's the Gaelic revival. It doesn't take you know 20, 30 years, and suddenly they're involved in the struggle called, called the Land War. And um, so here's the Gaelic revival, and here's the Land War. And this is a struggle to win back the land, and incredibly successful. By 1914, 90% of the land was once again in the hands of the small and the medium-sized farmers. This was after mass starvation in Ireland. And the land war is really great for study because it was waged almost entirely using nonviolence. I think only two people died. Very successful. And from there, they launched into the, the actual independence struggle. But it all starts with the Gaelic revival, with that culture of resistance that they created first. And they were very self-conscious about it. They knew what they were headed for. Another great example, um, the Harlem Renaissance. So here's some of the luminaries. Um, and that book in the corner, Rising from the Rails. The other piece of this, it wasn't just the art and the culture, um, the, the Pullman porters and what they brought to the civil rights movement. And I, can't, I don't have time to get into this, but that is a phenomenal book. Because what they did was they took a culture of survival and they turned it into a culture of resistance. They learned some incredible things as, as, as the, the, port, the Pullman porters, making their union, organizing for the strike, and that literally goes right into the civil rights movement. So, you know, here's the, the Children's Crusade. Um, I mean, the world was electrified by these pictures. The, the idea that anybody would turn a fire hose on a 12-year-old child. Um, even younger children, here's little Ruby Bridges. This picture always makes me cry. <laughs> she's six years old and she's doing this. She was single-handedly desegregating the Louisiana public school system. I just think it's incredible. And um, 
very inspiring, but also just to remember, I don't think we have a right to stand on the sidelines and wring our hands and say there's nothing we can do. Not what a six-year-old child can produce this kind of courage. So, yeah. Um, now understand, none of these people said, well, if we just write some nice plays and sing our own songs, the bad people will stop. Nobody said, we can just change our consciousness. You know, we don't need to change this corrupt and brutal system of power. Um, you know, somehow magically that'll do the trick. Nobody suggested that withdrawal alone would be a sufficient strategy. A true culture of resistance is self-consciously the cradle of the resistance movement. So it believes in resistance. It plans for resistance. It supports the resistance, and then it prepares for its ultimate success. And that's the difference between withdrawal as a successful part of, of a resistance movement and withdrawal as a dead end into despair and irrelevance. So task of an activist is not to navigate around systems of oppression with as much personal integrity as possible. I think a lot of times we feel like that's all we've got, but that's not our job. It's to dismantle those systems brick by brick. So the barricade of, of sexual terrorism, that's our job, brick by brick, we gotta bring it down. We are going to have to match their contempt with our courage, and we are going to have to match their brute power with our fierce and fragile dreams. And we're going to have to match that endless statism with a determination that will not bend and will not break and will not stop, because this is a war. The planet is in shreds, the indigenous are displaced and disappeared. Slavery is a way of life that is only temporarily veiled by distance and fossil fuel. Men's sadism has saturated the culture, and rape is now a public pastime. Okay, enough. Life and liberty will only be won when masculinity, its religion, its economics, its psychology, and its sex are confronted and defeated. And if we can't do it for ourselves, we gotta do it for her. Um, you love something, or you wouldn't be here today. Love is a verb. We've got to let that love call us to action. So, thank you. If we break now, we're exactly on time. So I think we should just stop. I mean, we were late all afternoon, so now if we just take off the next, you know, we're good. So I think... Unless somebody's dying to say something, we should just move into the next thing, and then we've made up for lost time. Yay! <laughs> How does everybody feel about that? I think we should just move. Just you must be tired. <laughs> it's overwhelming. I think we should just take a little break, and then we'll move into. Um, I think Kathy's next, right? Kathy Brennan? Am I wrong? Uh, no. no. Who's next? Sam. Sam. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome.